we got some 16 on center trusses here. Yeah, no, I, I can maybe get through this little hole there. Tough. Oh yeah. Right here. It doesn't look like it goes all the way through though. Because you've got a gable wall here or OSB. So that's why they have two attic hatches, I think. This is gonna be this is always a little bit of a challenge to get the hose in here. Very tight spot. So but uh, yeah, we just have to be careful on the uh, under here. Get all those areas. So the thing with this job is you gotta get under this furnace. Right. And over it. So it's a pretty tough job and it's a tight area too. So anyway. I have to I have to always work um backwards so I finished off this area here as best I could. You know, getting those small spots first. So getting that little area there and all the way down here. Always tough to get. The areas I always had to watch out for here is even these corners down here. Right? And under this under this main heat run in here. So I got to go all the way down here. So I've only done part of it. The other side I've done it. Except for that part. So I've got to focus again on getting all these little cracks filled. So. Alright, so I finished off a good chunk of both sides of the heat run there. And here's the attic hatch. Alrighty, so we got it covered here. Alrighty, so this is part two, second attic. You can see here where I uh, where I started, right where I finished. This is a decent size. This is the main heat run here with half pound. So, this is the big area. And again, I have to be careful to get right in there. This way. Really stuff it in. Right, so the strategy I employ in this one is again. I can see the bottom of that plate there on the corner. That's my um, right about here. That's my 22 mark right there. All right, so I'm going to follow that across uh, my exterior or gable wall here. But I know that the you know this connects to the other uh, portion of the attic over there. But of course, there's two attic hatches because of this separation wall that they put in. Well, I think that this is either maybe the lounge for the garage right? or the loft for the garage I should say on that side but uh, it's like from the house perspective the second floor it's completely continuous. Yeah I got quite a bit here to do but uh, it's nice and open compared to the other one so that's nice. Right, so what you're looking at here is uh, one of the uh, heat runs that's coming from the main uh, duct that's running along the middle of this attic. That's coming along here and then it dips down all the way down here and into the room that it's supposed to heat. So what I want to make sure too is that uh, you know I fill the right under the, uh, the heat duct like this first so that I know that at least the bottom is covered before I go over the top of it. So that's the strategy I employ for that. And just like you see here, I've got about a good eight inches covered and I still am not covering the pot light. So you can see right there. But now I'm finally going to, to cover it. 
so that's uh, again one of the things that um, I'm probably going to make on another video was to the um, the benefits of having an R60 versus having an R20. R20 is obviously like your you know eight inches, and so the old homes have you know maybe an R32, but it's all compressed. Typically, I see that um, people have walked in it and they've done you know some renovations. They've added pot lights. And so that means that uh, the flowing has been disturbed and so it's not anymore at a 12 inches now it's sometimes even barely covering the um the trusses so definitely is a, a good idea to always fix that i'm gonna walk my way back here and then i'm gonna cross that main heat duct being extra careful probably gonna try to hang on to these uh these trusses here use them as leverage to go across without stepping on this half pound that's easy to crush okay so here you know i'm on the other side of what i was talking about this is the other side of completed right and so i was able to grab onto this two by four and then walk over to the next two by four across there just so that I can get a on top of this uh, without damaging the half pound. So I'm gonna work as much as I can on this side and then go and work over there. And then I'm gonna have to come back over the heat run again and then uh, work back uh, to the other edge of the house here. People may wonder, you know, how I check uh, my depth for the R60 so I use the tape measure and then so I've already checked down this way and that was 22 and uh, well, a little bit past 22 so we're good on that and uh, like I said I tried not to do not to put my hand um, also over the uh, the blowing that's coming out um, so that technique is called cupping but that's only when you have a really really sort of narrow spot that you need to uh, insulate then you would use that technique um or around the attic hatch but um yeah for the big stuff you typically just want to let it uh, loosely fall onto the ground with uh, little resistance this way you get as much uh, bag coverage as you can okay so right here is a nice position to finish off this area because i'm parallel with the truss uh, cavities so i could just compare from truss to truss and then it's uh I've also got a good distance so that the insulation just falls right on to, uh, to itself. So, and then I can compare the truss level here and there and there. Make sure that the insulation crosses the trusses at the exact same spot. So that I know that my, um, my uh, depth is uh, uniform. Okay, so I've made my way across once again. Now, I'm located closer to the edge, right here. So I'm going to finish off this side. This side here, like this. Okay. What's nice is that with this position, I can uh, look over and then finish off on the other side. Or, I could also just wait to get to the other side of the heat run again and then finish it off uh, this uh, orientation but uh, typically it's always best to try to um, insulate parallel with the cavity the only reason why I can't do it here is because again I can't reach from the uh, main heat run here all the way down there properly because um, I always want to be sure that I'm covering the top plate of the exterior walls so this is the exterior wall where the exterior wall pretty much ends where that OSB um, is. So there's six inches of, uh, well, it's basically like a two by six that you see right there. That's your exterior wall. And the trusses rest on that, so that's also how you can tell that it's an exterior wall. If at the end, you know, the trusses are resting on it, so because obviously the exterior wall is the load bearing wall, the main load bearing wall. 
and all the when within the houses there's other load bearing walls that are all, always perpendicular to the trusses for the roof line that's what, how you can tell whether a wall inside uh, just adjacent to the, the roof is uh, load bearing or not is if it's uh, perpendicular to the trusses if it's parallel then it's not a load bearing wall all right so here i finished off both sides right and i'm working towards the middle so i'm just evening everything out just like this right making a nice angle so that everything just fluffs down making sure that all the trusses are exactly the same I still have this area here on the other side of the main heat run to, to do but I will easily finish that off and, uh, and then work to the attic hatch here I just uh, have a little bit around the attic hatch and then we're done so this house in total was uh, about 2500 square feet and so we're talking about um, a good uh, well, it's uh, 54 bags for 2,000, and then um, so 60, around 68, 70 bags. We'll go with 70 bags that it takes to uh, do this kind of house at R60. An idea of the cost. Um, just go to your local online Home Depot, Rona, and check out the uh, price per bag. I know it's around like you know the uh, 42, 45 dollar range. I think that it's increased actually so it's uh it's still pretty pricey obviously to do this sort of stuff and then if you were to you know rent your machine and if you didn't have a four inch hose then you'd be spending all day doing this definitely because it would take four times as much time compared to this hose if you were to go to with a rented hose which is typically like a 2.5 inch hose and even with that the machine itself um is limited right because you have to cut the bags in half whereas with the hopper that we have those accept a full bag and easily just chews up through that in a minute so it's uh definitely a change in the speed okay so this here is the final product okay so you see there's uh, those awkward bumps here that's the because of the main heat run but uh yeah, for the most part, I'm going to have to go and fix that part there. For the most part, it looks pretty even. 